Before I continue, note that this lecture and the next lecture are quite a bit longer than the average lectures in this course because we're reviewing a great deal of material uh, quickly rather than reintroducing or rather than introducing new material. With that said, let's continue. Now that we've looked at how to model the lift generated by an airfoil, let's review the incompressible flow. over 2D airfoils. So this is 4.1 to 4.5 of Anderson. So remember what our definition of an airfoil is. It's the 2D section of a wing in the plane of the incoming velocity. So, x, y, z, for example, and have some v infinity coming in this way. Then with an airflow that looks like that, what we're talking about is, uh, sorry, a wing that looks like this, we're talking about a cut through the XZ plane in this example. Now there's two ways of analyzing low-speed airfoils. We can use an analytical approach, which is called thin airfoil theory. Or we can use a numerical method called the vortex panel method. Now we'll discuss these in more detail next time, but we're going to review the groundwork today. So let's review the key nomenclature for airfoils. Which is if I exaggerate this airfoil a little bit and make it quite thick, here we are. And from this point, that's the furthest forward point to the furthest back point. This is the airflow cord. Usually called C. The camber uh, or mean camber line connects the leading edge to the trailing edge. In a line that's always exactly halfway between the upper and lower surface of the airfoil. So that's the mean camber line. The camber of the airfoil, or which is often a shorthand for saying the maximum camber, is the distance between the camber line and the cord line, whereas the thickness of the airfoil is the distance between the upper and lower surfaces and a typical value for the leading edge radius of an airfoil is approximately 2% of the cord. The knack of four-digit airfoils are ones that we'll use often in this course because of their simplicity. So, for example, 
in NACA 2412, what this means is that this 2 is the maximum camber in terms of percent chord, so it's 2% camber. The 4 is the location of the maximum camber in one tenth of chord, so this is 40% chord for the max camber location. Well, this is 2% max camber. And the 12 is the max thickness. And that's again in percent chord. And the typical characteristic of an airfoil looks something like this. If this is angle of attack alpha, and this is the lift coefficient per unit span, there will be some value of alpha where the lift is zero. And a linearly increasing lift slope, alpha A naught, which is B, C, L, B alpha, up until we get to C, L max, after which there's a drop off in lift due to stall of the airfoil. And this uh, stall is in effect caused by flow separation. So this is a viscous effect. It's something that we can't predict with potential flow theory. We can, however, predict alpha, uh, the, the zero lift angle of attack and the lift slope, uh, using our inverse flow theory. We can also get the moment coefficient for the airflow, uh, using, uh, inverse flow theory. So for a real airfoil, the lift slope is not really a function of the Reynolds number, but CL max is, and a real airfoil drag coefficient has the following bucket-like shape. which is not captured with the invisible modeling.